Hey guys and welcome. Today I'm going to be sharing my top 15 tips for Hypixel Bed Wars. This guide is geared towards people who are already pretty good at the basics and want to take their play to the next level, but it's never too early to try learning a new technique, so I'm sure that there's something in this guide for everyone. If this video ends up helping you, please drop a like, and with that, let's get right into the first tip. The first tip I have is that when you don't have a bed and you're clutching, save your fireballs. It can be really tempting to try and take people out with a fireball, but unless you're sure you can get them, don't waste it. Fireballs are, in my opinion, the most versatile item in the game, and they have so many uses when you're trying to stay alive without a bed. You can use them to backboard an incoming enemy, expose an invis player, take out somebody with jump boost, or save yourself with the pearl fireball technique, which I'll make a video on separately. One thing I love using fireballs for is jumping away right after mining an obsidian defense since you don't want to get hit into the void if it's going to be close. Fireballs can help you escape almost any scenario and can be used very creatively to get other players out, so don't be this guy who threw four fireballs at me that ended up doing absolutely nothing. And this was on air show, so fireballs were extra hard to come by. And this brings us to tip two, which is that fireballs deal true damage. What that means is fireballs will do damage to someone regardless of armor or protection level. So even a prot four diamond player can be taken out with a fireball. Just knowing this can win you some very tough games or fights. Two of the craziest games I've ever played ended with fireball true damage. As I complete a castle clutch by fireballing the last player and finish off a hacker clutch on a player who I couldn't reach to get the last hit. The third tip is that when you're fighting on a bridge, if you drop on someone from above, they'll take a ton of KB and you won't. You can see when I drop on this guy here that even though we both hit each other one time, he went flying while I barely moved at all. It's a pretty simple and well-known mechanic, but I wanted to touch on it briefly since it's important for all the bridge fighting tips going forward. There's a good chance you already knew this one, so let's move on to the more interesting tips. The fourth tip is that you should get very comfortable with bypassing. And by bypassing, I mean going around blocks on a bridge. There are two main ways to do this. One is called a neo, where you jump out and around the pillar in order to land on the other side of it. And while knowing this technique is definitely useful, I'm talking more about placing blocks on the side of a pillar or section in the bridge in order to bypass it quickly. Once you get comfortable with this movement, it allows you to play much faster and take opponents by surprise, and opens up some more advanced techniques that you can build off of it with. You can skip an opponent completely and go for the bed, or attack from a side that the opponent isn't expecting. In these clips, I predict that the opponent is going to pillar up in front of them, so I jump off in order to clutch on the side of their pillar once they build it up, catching them completely by surprise. And this actually leads really nicely into tip number 5. The fifth tip is a technique I'll call the pillar jump. It builds off the movement we learned in tip 4 to block an opponent off and then jump out to the side of your own pillar to knock them off once they're stuck getting around it. To pull this off, all you need to do is build a few blocks straight up in front of your opponent, making sure that you have a little space between you and the pillar. Then you jump off the bridge and place a block on your pillar and knock the opponent off from the side. I usually aim to place my block one block higher than the bridge, but you can also do it level with the bridge if you prefer. This is a pretty tricky technique to master, but it's incredibly useful in turning the tide in a bridge fight or catching opponents off guard. You can even chain together multiple pillar jumps to cross a larger distance and attack from the side if you can manage to jump out again from the first block that you place. Like 
Strafe switching is a technique I started messing around with recently and have found that it's insanely powerful for bridge fights. I assume most people watching this video know about 45 degree strafing in bridge fights, so what I've been doing is switching the direction I strafe right before I attack the opponent. Because I'm getting on the bridge here using W and D, I'm looking to hit them towards the left. The opponent is likely setting up to counter that and hit me off to the right. But then, right before we attack each other, I switch to strafing with A instead of D and look to hit them off to the right, which they are totally unguarded for. This technique is easy to perform and immensely powerful in bridge fights. I also find myself using it in coordination with the pillar jump. In this clip, the opponent backs off from the pillar when I jump around it, meaning I can't hit them off the side anymore, so I quickly switch strafes in that empty space and knock the opponent off the same way they were trying to hit me. This combo of doing the pillar strat and then strafe switching if there's empty space behind the pillar is my favorite bridge fighting tech and it works on 2v1s as well. I'm gonna guess most viewers already know about hit selecting, where you delay your first hit until after the opponent hits you in order to start a combo. Tip 7 is something that I like to call hit selecting for position, or position selecting, where I delay my first hit in order to move to a better angle to attack the enemy. In this clip, if I hit the enemy immediately, it would just send him back towards the island, so I delay my hit until I have a better angle to attack them from, so I can knock them sideways off the bridge and into the void. Here, where I'm running towards the opponent, my back is to the void and his is to his bed defense, so I once again delay my hit until I've moved far enough in that I can hit him towards the edge instead. A very cool technique that also reduces your knockback through the hit selecting aspect. Tip number 8 is a little more well known, but it definitely warrants a spot on this list. The W tapping I'm focusing on here is to keep the correct spacing in combos. The way it works is when you're comboing someone, you don't want them to be able to hit you out of it, but if you just keep holding down W and running forward, you'll eventually run into your opponent's range. W tapping is where you quickly release the W key for a short time during the combo, which slows down your forward movement and keeps you out of your opponent's range, which ends up looking like you're tapping the W key. It's hard to get the correct spacing down at first, but once you get it, you'll be able to W tap to keep yourself that perfect distance away from your opponent in a combo. A good way to practice this is in sumo, where you can play around with tapping W to create more space during your combos until you can find that perfect area that you want to stay in. Up next is S tapping. Also, I just spent 3 hours editing this 1 second clip alone and I'm going crazy, so please like this video if you're still watching, it has been a lot of work. Anyways, S tapping functions similarly to W tapping, but it's a little harder to learn and pull off. Some people like to S tap by just tapping S while they're still holding down W, but this just stops your forward momentum and is fundamentally the exact same as W tapping. I'm talking about letting go of W and tapping S to move yourself backwards a little. This actually increases spacing between you and your opponent, so you can use it if you've gotten a little too close and need to back off. I definitely recommend getting good at W tapping first so that you understand spacing really well before trying to learn how to S tap. That being said, S tap is harder but much more powerful, as with W tapping you can only stop yourself from going forward while S tapping actually lets you move backwards as well. Because of this, you can S tap in situations where it'd be impossible to W tap, namely when your opponent has their back against a wall or is stuck in a corner. If you S tap correctly, you can dodge into an opponent's range to land a hit and then back away before they can hit you back even if they've got blocks behind them. I personally love using S taps on someone who's buying from the shop since they'll usually end up against a wall after a couple of hits. 
And if you're really good at judging spacing, you can even S-tap to start a combo sometimes by getting the first hit and then S-tapping out of your opponent's range. Once you get good at both W and S-tapping, you can use them together to completely control spacing and leave your opponents no chance. Tip 10 is my favorite technique in the whole game, which I call Jamesing. I say that because the first time I ever saw it used was in James's videos, and when I started using it, I just found myself saying, yeah, check out the item James. <laughs> Anyways, the basic premise of this technique is that you build a block off out of wool between you and the opponent, and then mine through it with shears to surprise them. I find myself using this a ton when getting someone's bed, as it's easy to build out a sideways pillar from someone's defense and then knock the enemy into the void when they try to get around it. You can even wait to break a bed on purpose so that a respawning enemy thinks they can save it and tries to rush out, only to get lured into a James. You can also James someone on flat ground by building up a little structure to block off from like in this clip. That's the basic premise, but the best thing about this technique is that it has an incredibly high skill ceiling, meaning the better and more creative you are, the more complicated versions you can pull off. For instance, you can build a second layer on top of the first one to keep an enemy from going over the top, and then mine through the bottom to surprise them. I've started to incorporate multiple steps into a James where I'll dodge in and out from behind the pillar, shearing from different spots and then blocking them up again behind me. This technique is a blast and I really recommend trying it. It's hard, but it's also the sole reason I got back into Bed Wars. She done told you twice and you still ain't listening She ain't fuck with you if you ain't got dividends Sweet brown girl with a tan like cinnamon Visiting the clubs on tour like old Michigan Summa Kumba. Tip 11 is to be patient with your fights People often rush into a fight for no reason Even if they have a really bad chance of winning But now that you know all these PvP techniques There's a lot of situations where you'll have a massive advantage Like bridge fights or fights around the bed defense You should try to structure fights around these places Where you have an advantage I'm starting this fight down a lot of damage, so I want to bait the opponent out instead of having them hole up in the gen. I start to take the fight, but you'll notice I'm already holding S as the fight starts since I just want to bait him out and then turn after the first hit. I lure him out to his defense so I could James him and win the fight even though I started with a lot less health. In this clip, I have less health, so I want a bridge fight with this guy where I can use a strat to knock him off, but he's wary and refuses to come off the island. Instead of going to fight him on bad terms, I'm totally fine to just camp on the bridge and regen health since it's still my first rush and no one else is going to come get me in the meantime. When he finally comes onto the bridge, I use the pillar jump on him and get his bed, leaving me on full health for an easy final fight. You can even be patient around your own bed. I know losing this fight would mean losing my bed and then likely getting finaled after, so I'm in no rush to go in on this guy, and I leave him right next to my bed until I get an opportunity to land some hits and secure the win. Hey guys, I'll tell you about this tip in a second, but for now, I thought I'd show you instead. Enjoy. Hope you like that little mini montage, I had to switch over to After Effects to make it so it took a long time. Anyways, this tip is a little different from the others, but I needed to include it. If your mouse can short drag click, learn how to do it and see if it's for you. It is by far the best right click clicking technique in my opinion, and I say that as someone who butterflies 27. 
Pretty much everything I do in the game with blocks, I do it with short dragging. In that mini montage, I specifically use clips that were all done with short dragging just to show you a little bit of what it allows for. People are generally mistaken about drag clicking and think that it's only useful for god bridging, which they also shun as useless. In reality, drag clicking allows for the fastest maneuvers possible, including block traps. and block-ins. And can make other difficult techniques easier, like ladder block clutching and doing drop twos. Fast bridging also shouldn't be slept on, as being able to walk straight into a moonwalk like this is way faster than any ninja bridge and could help in a lot of scenarios. Like if you're being chased, but you need to bridge a few blocks out at the end of the bridge in order to make a jump. Also, god bridging is awesome and way faster than ninja bridging and is super useful if you can do it consistently. Once you know how to short drag, it's effortless to do over and over and unlike butterfly clicking, it only requires one finger, meaning you can keep really accurate aim while while doing it, unlike the less controlled grip that you'll have when you're butterflying right click. It also means you don't have to switch your grip. Do note though that drag clicking isn't necessary and that everything I did in the mini montage can probably be done without drag clicking other than the speed telly. So don't worry if your mouse can't drag, the best player in the game doesn't drag click so it's clearly not required, but a lot of common mice can easily short drag click like the Model O for instance. If yours can, give it a whirl, you might find it super useful and super fun. Tip 13 is a really useful one. When you skip someone to go for their bed and they're chasing you, turn and fight them on the bridge before you get to the bed. Nobody expects you to take a fight when you have a free pass to their bed and a lot of the time they're just looking straight down at the bridge focused on getting back as fast as possible and won't have a clue when you turn early and smack them off. This works really well with the bypass strategies from tip 4 and the bridge fighting strats we looked at since you can often bypass someone who's building up in order to skip them and then turn on the bridge when they scramble to get back. I like to build a pillar between me and the opponent and then go around or over it to attack them since they'll usually expect the pillar was just to block them off and won't expect me to be right there when they start to go over it. In this clip, I managed to skip my opponent, but he's close behind me and I know I won't be able to get his bed before I have to fight him, so I turn early on the bridge and hit him with the pillar jump while he's still staring straight down trying to get over my pillar. Now he's dead and I have plenty of time to get his bed even with the trap. I love this strat and find it's really consistent. Tip 14 is to be mindful of your block placements and bridges. By noting what colors of blocks are in certain parts of the map, you can tell if somebody new is heading towards your base. For instance, by bridging up a little at the end like this, I can always just glance over at that bridge for the rest of the game to see if there's any new blocks that weren't there before, and if there aren't, I can pretty safely assume I won't be rushed soon from that side. I don't really have any footage for this since it's not exactly something that I would clip, but I'm constantly noting who's using what bridge throughout the game. In this clip, I just took out Grey Team, and now I need to choose whether to continue on or go back to my bed. One quick glance across the map shows new white blocks that weren't there before, so I know that this guy is close to my base. I void and manage to save my bed in time when I respawn, eventually landing me the win. I can handle every time you had a bad day You said I'd get a text and so you'll never look my way Thought I'd do something fun for the last tip, tip 15 is the jump trap. Trapping is really a dying breed and nobody falls for stuff like block traps anymore, but that's exactly why this works. This isn't a meme tip at all. The jump trap is genuinely incredibly useful, specifically in solo bed wars. Let me explain. A jump trap works by having a one block drop to a two block gap. If you jump right before walking up the edge, you'll hit your head on the ceiling and then land on the other side. But if you just walk through it, you'll fall. 
In order to build it, just place a block on a flat bridge, mine the block behind it, and then pillar up three blocks right after that hole. Mine the bottom two blocks while standing on the top one, build one more block up, and then make a random staircase above the hole from there. I started making that staircase on top to disguise the trap since it just looks like the bridge got messed up earlier and I didn't bother to fix it. It's worked really well ever since I started doing it. Now, you basically have an extra defender for your bed. I often make these on the bridge to my base so that I can leave and go attack other people without worrying as much that someone will get my bed while I'm gone. This genuinely works first try about 95% of the time. In this clip, I was off getting someone else's bed and Pink Team tried to get my bed while I was away. Instead, I take out my team and he falls in the jump trap, saving my bed in a situation that I literally could not have defended otherwise. In this clip, I'm chasing the last player, but he has a big lead on me and is going for my bed. I don't want to void because then he'll just head to middle and get all the M's and I'll have to start from square one finding him again. So instead, I just keep running after him knowing I have a jump trap set up just for this scenario. He's pretty far ahead and trying to get to my base ASAP, so he falls victim to the jump trap, winning me the game. Awesome technique to know and it's super fun to see opponents fall in your trap all game. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I put so much time and effort into this, so it means a lot. If you watch to the end, comment tipsy so I can see how many people actually watch the whole thing. And please be sure to leave a like. I really need it. With that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.